Hello friends, it's Shan here. Welcome or welcome back to Golf with Shan. Lunar New Year just passed and in Asia that marks the beginning of spring, hence spring festival. I know it is still very cold outside but the days are getting longer and some of us have started preparation for the upcoming golf season. And speaking of preparation, today's video is going to be focused on your pre-shot routine, the preparation you do before every golf shot on the golf course. This video will be added to my beginner's guide series where I share my knowledge to new golfers and try to get them out there and golf as soon as possible. My goal for this video and this whole beginner series is to keep it everything as simple as possible. If you are a seasoned golfer and watching this video just for fun, stick around, make sure to comment down below if you have any additional tips for people who are just starting out to golf that maybe I didn't cover in this video. And with that, let's get started with the first topic, which is what is a pre-shot routine and why should you have one? A pre-shot routine is a series of repeatable actions that you can do before every golf shot to prepare you mentally and physically for the golf shot. Think of it this way. In every single sport, and even in your life, there are pre-shot routines of various kinds. Imagine a tennis player getting ready for a serve. Oftentimes, if you watch the professionals, they will have a same series of movements. These are all part of their pre-shot routine. Then if you think about a basketball player, for example, before a free throw, oftentimes they will have very similar actions that they do every single time. It prepares their body for an action that they've done so many times, and so if they don't do that, something feels off. Imagine yourself waking up in the morning, maybe you prepare a cup of coffee, you scroll through Reddit in your bed before you get out of bed, maybe you make the bed. These are all parts of your preparation for the day. If you don't do some of these things, everything just feels off. And that's the same thing with golf. Every good golfer has a pre-shot routine. It's a series of preparation for that golf shot. A pre-shot routine is only 10 to 15 seconds. It should not be any longer than that, but that's all you need to get yourself ready for the golf shot. And especially after you've hit thousands, even hundred thousand millions of golf shots, this is the mechanics that gets you to hit the best shot possible every single time. Now, different people will have a slightly different pre-shot routine, but there are important similarities across the board. In this video, I'm going to walk you through my pre-shot routine, which from what I've seen is actually really generic. So it's a good reference for you, especially if you are new to golf. And we're gonna talk about the key steps, the five key steps to a good pre-shot routine. And by the end of this video, you will be able to build your own pre-shot routine and get out there on the golf course. Step number one, before every single golf shot, you have to determine what golf club you're going to use for the upcoming golf shot. For beginners, the biggest determinants of what golf club you want to use is going to be distance and lie. You want to be able to measure out how far you are currently, how far your ball is from where you want it to end up. You can use different technologies like a rangefinder that'll tell you the distance, or you can use different markers on the side of the fairways. Sometimes they'll tell you how far you're from the hole and then you can just do some simple math to figure that out. But distance is very important. Another thing you want to think about with distance is if there are hazards around, if there's a water pond to your right, if there's a giant tree on the left, you want to figure out how far you are from those hazards so that you can avoid it as best as possible. The second thing you want to think about is the lie. So the lie refers to how your ball is sitting up on the ground. So if you're on the fairway, the ball is probably sitting up nicely, the grass is nice and short, and in that situation you can basically hit whatever club you want the distance for. If the ball is in the rough or in the bunker or in some kind of weird lie, then you will want to take an easier to hit golf club, maybe a higher lofted, like a higher iron, seven, eight, nine iron, pitching wedge. Those will probably be better options for you if you are in a difficult lie. So distance and lie, those are going to be the biggest determinants if you are a beginner for what golf club you're going to use next. For step number two, there are two different situations we will cover. First up is going to be if you're on the tee deck. Second situation is everywhere else on the golf course. So let's start off with situation one. What is a tee deck? 
At the beginning of every single golf hole, you will see a sign, and that sign is going to say what number hole you are on, what the par is, if it's a par three, four, or five, and underneath it'll tell you what the distances are from each of the tee decks. So if you look next to that sign, generally you'll see a few giant patches of grass where it looks like it was mowed down. Where you see short grass in different patches at the beginning of a golf hole, those are your tee decks. And generally speaking, for most golf courses, there are going to be multiple tee decks. The colors on the tee decks depend on what golf course and what country you're in, but for the most part, the front tees are going to be the red tees, and then if you move back one tee, they're gonna be the white tees, and then the blue tees, and then finally you're gonna to get to the championship tees or the professional tees, the black or gold. If you are completely new to golf, you will probably wanna start in the forward tees and then move back as you get better. Please don't feel pressured by your buddies who are playing from the blue tees. If you are new to golf, don't play from the blue tees with them. Just move up a tee box, you'll feel happier. They, if they're gonna chirp you, it's whatever, you know? <laughs> All right, so now that we know what the tee decks are and you've picked your tee deck, you are going to bring your your golf club, your golf glove, a tee, and a ball up to the tee deck. Once you've arrived at your tee deck, this is the only place on the golf course where you can tee the ball up. What that means is you can put a tee down and the ball on top, and you can adjust this tee to as high or as low as you want it to be depending on what golf club you are hitting. We can talk about that in a different day, but just know tee deck is the only place where you can tee a ball up nowhere else. So on every single tee deck, there are going to be two markers. These tee markers are going to be on either side of the tee box. So if you are standing facing the fairway, there will be one marker on your left and one on your right, and usually they'll be the color of the tee deck that you're on. So if you're on the white tee deck, they're both going to be white. And then if you draw an imaginary line connecting those two tee markers, that is as far forward as you can tee the ball. So you cannot tee the ball in front of the imaginary line you created connecting those two tee markers. That basically marks this boundary. It's like a starting line if you're competing in a running race where you have to start behind that line. And the rule is from that imaginary line, if you measure back two club lengths and then you draw an imaginary box, that is basically all the area you have to tee the ball up. So that's something to note. You can't tee up in front of the tee deck and you can tee up up to two club lengths behind the tee markers. Generally speaking, you will want to tee up closer to the tee markers so you give yourself a little bit of a distance advantage. So what I like to do is when I walk up to the tee deck, I'm facing the fairway. Make sure you are facing the fairway. Now you're going to look at which side of the tee deck you want to tee up on. If there is, for example, a giant forest on your left, or there is a giant water pond on your left, you will probably want to tee off on the right side so you can aim down the right side of the golf hole. Vice versa, if there is a giant pond on your right side or a giant bunker on the right you want to avoid and the fairway is open on the left side, you might want to move the ball to the left side of the tee deck, tee up there so you can hit down the left side. So you do have that range of freedom when you get up to the tee deck. Now let's talk about situation two for step number two. If you are not on the tee deck, so anywhere else on the golf course, you cannot move your golf ball. There are specific rules, like if you hit it into the water or if it rained a lot and you can pick up the ball and clean it if that's a rule that day, those are the only situations where you can pick up the ball. Otherwise, you have to play it as it lies on the ground. So for those situations, you cannot tee the ball up, but instead you can move different things around the ball that might be impacting your shot. For example, if there is a tree branch right in front of your ball, you can move it as long as moving it won't move the golf ball. Or if you are stepping on a leaf and it could really throw off your balance, you can move the leaf. So this is where you want to clean up the environment around your ball. If you're on the green, you might wanna move away some of the leaves in your way or anything that's in your way between you and the hole. This is going to be step number two. If you're not on the tee deck, is to clean up the environment without moving the golf ball. Now that you've selected your golf club and teed up the golf ball or cleaned up the environment around the ball, you are ready to take your practice swing. Very few golfers will hit a golf shot without taking a practice swing. Very few good golfers will take more than two practice swings. Please, if you don't need to, 
don't take more than two practice swings. This is a public service announcement for everyone. For beginners out there, the purpose of a practice swing is for you to imagine the shot that you are about to hit, for you to literally practice the shot without hitting the ball. Where you take the practice swing will really depend on you. I like to take a step back from the golf ball but in the same line as the golf ball and I take the practice swing there. Moving along to step number four which is to look at your golf shot from behind the golf ball. When I was in high school, my high school coach told everyone on the team that we have to start every single golf shot from behind the ball. This is just a lesson that I've kept in my mind. This is something that all good golfers do. After I take my practice swing, I always walk behind the golf ball to about like a foot or two behind the ball and I look at the golf shot. This is where you will take aim at your target. This is where you're going to imagine your target line. When we look sideways at where we want to aim, oftentimes that is not the right direction because our peripheral is not always correct. If you walk behind the ball and you look straight at where you want to aim, that is where you're going to get the best aim at your target. So once you're standing behind the ball and you're looking forward at where you want the ball to go, you're going to draw a straight line back to your golf ball and you're going to pick one spot about six inches to a foot in front of your golf ball and you're going to pinpoint that spot on the ground, remember it or even just stare at it and walk towards your ball. So now that you have that spot picked out, we're going to move on to your final step, step number five, which is right before you hit the golf ball. So now you're going to approach the golf ball and from the spot that you picked, which is right in line with your target, from that spot, draw a line back to your golf ball and that is going to be your aiming target. So when I line up to the ball, when I get up to the ball, I want to line up my feet parallel to that line between my ball and the spot. That is going to be my guide for where I'm aiming. If my feet is in line with my target line, then I know at least at address, which is at the setup, I am on target. If my swing does something else, then that's my swing business. The worst thing is if you hit it right and then you realize you were just aiming there the whole time and it wasn't even a swing fault. So always make sure you are at least aligned straight at your target and then whatever happens after, you know you at least did the first part correct. So now we have gone through all five steps. Let's recap quickly. Step number one, select the correct golf club. Step number two is to either tee up your golf ball if you're on the tee deck and if you're anywhere else, make sure that you've removed the different debris around the ball that can impact your golf shot. Step number three is going to be to take a practice swing. Step number four is to get behind the golf ball, look at your golf ball and where you want it to go. Step number five is to approach the ball, line up your feet to your target. And then for me, just out of habit, I like to look one more time at the fairway or at the hole or whatever and then I hit the shot. So that is your five step pre-shot routine. Hopefully after this video and after watching my pre-shot routine, you can build your own pre-shot routine and make sure no matter what to go through your pre-shot routine before every single shot on the golf course. It is a really good habit to form, especially if you are new to golf. Make sure if you don't wanna do anything else, to start every shot from behind the golf ball. Before I end this video, I just wanna say everyone's pre-shot routine is going to be a little bit different. You do whatever it takes to get you in the right mindset. A pre-shot routine for you might involve a sip of beer. You do you as long as it's not impacting anyone else and is not taking up extra time. For the new golfers out there, remember that you can only tee up the ball on the tee deck and it has to be behind the tee markers. You can't move the ball anywhere else. And please try to keep your practice swings to two maximum. I also made this video about the setup for a golf swing and this other video about golf swing basics that are going to be useful for after your pre-shot routine. So go ahead and check those videos out if you haven't already, or if you have already, go ahead and revisit those videos. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I really do hope it was helpful. Please make sure to hit that like button if you're still watching, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you have additional comments for me, especially from the perspective of a beginner asking me some questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I do read and try to respond to most, if not all of my comments, as you guys will see in all of my other videos. With that, thank you so much for watching. Get ready for the next golf season because I have a lot of exciting and golf content for you guys coming up and yeah i will see you in my next video
Bye.